Greetings, gentle viewers! And howdy howdy! Last time we put in a lot of face time with the secondary characters. No, we really didn't. Yeah, we did. No, I I don't think that that's right. No, that's that's 100% true. I don't know if it's fair to call them secondary characters. I just don't think so. I feel like that's a very valid description. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Don't start that again. I wasn't starting anything. Yes, you were. No, no, no. Look, it's time for us to go and investigate the crime scene so we can figure out what's going on and so we can take forever blathering about every little thing. No, we won't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we will. No, we won't. I'm not sure what makes you say that. I think all available evidence and experience points to... Yes? Hold on, let me consult my magic eight ball. Signs point to no. Uh, yes? Uh, no? Are you mocking me? No? Yes, you are! <laughs> Speaking of mocking each other, we're the Bittersweet Gamers. No, we are! Yes, we are! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Billy, I really want to tell you no. <laughs> Stop! Two cars. Two cops. These cars have been parked here since before 3.17 a.m. Okay, which one belongs to Matsushita Mayumi? One van and one station wagon. Probably the station wagon. So what's the other one? Iba. What's in the box? If only you'd get in the box with me, Snake. It looks like a person. Hmm. <laughs> what? Stealth technology. No, never mind. It's a silicone doll. In the shape of a woman. Oh yeah? Oh, I see. <laughs> hey, uh, Iba, let's uh let's just use Zoom. We need to this could be really important for the uh investigation. <laughs> let's just activate X ray and zoom. Of of the case. The investigation of the, of the case, so we should uh, investigate this for the case. <laughs> a wooden box. There's a silicone doll inside, but I'm pretty sure that has nothing to do with the case. Yes, it does. That's enough out of you. There's an oil drum here. It looks like that girl Reika from the cabaret club in Nakamagura. See, this is one of those that I really wish I could get, but I there is something I'm just not connecting. Yeah, I don't quite get it either. It looks nothing like her. I, I think maybe she's just jealous of Reika from the Cabaret Club, and so is just comparing her to all sorts of unflattering things to take Date off. Come, let us dissect it further so it becomes even less interesting. There's an oil drum. It looks nothing like Reika. <laughs> the water of Tokyo Bay. Date, look! The school of mullet! I bet they taste great! And? <laughs> Aren't the fish so cute? They look like food! <laughs> Who owns the van? The Matsushita family. Oh, they had the van then. Oh, that's surprising. It appears as though it was used for transporting ingredients and supplies. Tessa, wait! Uh, I'll get the car! Ota's fingerprints were found on the steering wheel and gear shift. You know, considering what we found out about Mayumi, it's possible that we did misinterpret that scene because she can't be expected to behave in any sort of a manner that would make sense. It's true, but there is the fact that Iris walked up to her and then she reacted somehow in a weird way. It's possible we're wrong about that. That's fair. Although Iris's reaction was the most suspicious to all of that. Iris's fingerprints were found around the passenger seat. Those were the only prints recently made. Was there anything else found inside the car? There was one thing. Yeah? What was it? Ota's cell phone. But that makes sense. The one he purchased two days ago in Akihabara. Why'd he leave it in there? That's a good question. It slid under the driver's seat. Where's the phone now? So he was in a hurry? And dropped it and never bothered to try and get it, or didn't notice, I guess. Maybe just didn't notice? It's just, this could mean something. Its data is being inspected and evaluated. Good. 
This station wagon is a stolen car. I see. Stolen. Last night, the owner of the vehicle reported it stolen. Now, well. It was stolen at 10.33 p.m. yesterday. The theft occurred in Fuchu, Tokyo, in the parking lot of Famisto, a convenience store along Koshu Highway. The Famisto parking lot, huh? The car was stolen while the owner was shopping inside the store. The vehicle's engine was on. Never do that. Yeah, that's why you don't do that. The doors might have even been unlocked which would have made the theft easy for the culprit. Was there a video camera at that family stow that could have maybe seen it happen? Who took the car? Ota Matsushita. There we go. That I kept wanting to jump in and say something, but I was like, no, no, let's just wait <laughs> and see what they're going to say. What? Why would he? Can you believe that I showed restraint? <laughs> no, I don't have the heart to counter. <laughs> Oto got into the car and drove off. The security cameras at the convenience store caught the entire incident. Oto's fingerprints were also found on the steering wheel of that car. There is no doubt that it was Ota. The stream of the polar bear started around 3 a.m. Correct. About 10 minutes later, Ota appeared on screen. Conveniently after the bear left, Ota stole the car at 10.33 p.m. That makes four and a half hours until he appeared on screen. Mm, right. Mm, I cannot find anything in the vicinity that could be a clue. Well, tough. We're going to talk to the cops. Me either. Let's check inside the warehouse. Oh, boy! Wow, it's cold in here. Hey. Almost like it's some kind of cold storage. Oh, there's Kagami. The air conditioners have stopped. However, the insulation in the walls has kept the room temperature close to what it was this morning. I should finish this investigation before I freeze to death. Well then, you had better get started. So Ota had the Matsushita car, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. And he stole a car. Yeah. He was most definitely the one driving both of them. Mm -hmm. Why would he steal a car? Uh, what I mean by that is... He was at a convenience store along a highway, for whatever reason, without a car. Yeah. And happened to have an opportunity to take a car. It feels like him deliberately planning that is kind of down to luck. Right. If he was deliberately planning stealing a car, which is possible because, like, maybe he needed it for his plan, the problem is he took one that had the perfect opportunity, which, just like you said, it makes it seem like it's some kind of luck but he must have had a reason to take the car but he already had a car i kind of feel like we should find out more about the owner of the car maybe there was something in the car he wanted beyond just the car itself it just does seem like that's a pretty pathetic thing to do i mean completely caught on the cameras yeah i can't think he, of... like we can't accuse him of masterminding some complicated plan here if like, a few hours before that happens, he randomly steals a car and gets caught on camera. It seems like that doesn't match up. So there's, like, there got to be a reason, right? There has to be. Uh, also, the car was stolen at, what, 10.33 p.m.? Yes. I don't recall what time Date was clonged on the head. Me either. Or how long he was out. Iris never drove the van. Or, or at least they didn't find her fingerprints on the steering wheel. They only found her fingerprints on the passenger seat. That's true. That could be a deliberate deception, she I guess. She could have put on gloves or something after the fact and then drove the van. Basically, it's either a weird coincidence, which... Ha! 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 Yeah, no, right. Yeah, there are no coincidences. Or we're being presented with some information that they expect us to jump to a conclusion in or with. Yeah. I can't think of any reason why they would do that. Right. Even if they were trying to make some sort of alibi having Ota on camera, there's still plenty of time for him to get here with the stolen car. Like, maybe maybe while they were driving off, he's going to be like, Iris was kid Aset was kidnapped by the Cyclops killer, and so I desperately stole a car to chase after them. That might be the reason for that. Uh, you seem to be a bit cold, buddy. Yeah, some engineer from NRIPS created a jacket lined with heating wires. That keeps me warm. Nice, right? Neat! 
You don't seem to be wearing gloves, though. All the cops and inspectors around here are wearing them. Cool. Then why are you freezing? Is your wire vest turned on? Any progress on the investigation? I checked this place point by point, but didn't find nothing. Shelves packed with cardboard boxes. I asked the cop on the scene, and he said there wasn't anything special in them. There's a dark spot over there. A shadow on the left catches my eye. Turn the camera. But since it seems to be important, I'll get to it later. You know, there's also the third person at the scene. The person in the bear suit? Right. I just wonder if the cars and the weird situation with that has something to do with transporting the third person. Uh, I, who knows? Who knows? See, if that third person had a car, mm -hmm. why did Oda bring two cars? Ah! Well, presumably if the third person escaped, they probably escaped in the car, right? Stands to reason, or... Uh, yeah, that's what I meant. That it, if the third person had their own car, whether they were involved with this, or or this is all legitimate and not a setup, then it would make sense that they use a car. Yeah, that's what I meant. So why were there two cars for Moda? <laughs> hmm. Until we find out more information, I'm not sure we could really hazard a guess. An oil drum. It really does look like Reika from that cabaret club in Nakamagura. How... How does a cabaret girl look like an oil drum? I told you it does not. A hook is hanging from the ceiling frame. Hmm. And and the thingy is set up under the hook, though it could just be the center of the room. There are only a few items on the shelf. Is this warehouse not in use? The tires of the forklift are clearly frozen to the ground. It hasn't been moved in a long time. Hmm. What are you thinking? Nothing. It just seemed noteworthy. <laughs> well, it did make me think. Like, I don't know what you would need in a warehouse. There's information I am lacking, but why exactly is there a giant buzzsaw here? You know, I was very curious as well. If it was for some sort of preparation of fish, like to just dehead them, I just feel like there's way more convenient ways to do that. I don't think you would do that in a warehouse. It does A, a warehouse is used to store things, <laughs> not prepare food. <laughs> you know, I guess the thing does have wheels on it. Oh yeah, it does. So it wasn't forklifted in, at least not from forklift A. Now, forklift A and forklift B have different conditions. Well, that's pretty suspicious. Okay, well, if it's got wheels... The machine with the buzzsaw is the thing with wheels. Yes. If it's got wheels, that means it's mobile, so maybe it was just being stored here. Like, it's not part of the warehouse. It was just some other machinery being stored at this location. Now, I bet this one isn't going to be stuck to the ground. Right, that's why I brought that up. A forklift. I don't see anything special about it. It doesn't look frozen like the other one. And Iba was also oh like, oh, I just think we should make note of it, that's all. A video camera and laptop. This is what the criminal used to stream. Hmm. All of these items have been bought from pawn shops and thrift stores. It would be difficult to determine a suspect from Yeah, them. I was gonna ask, but figured it might be something like that, and indeed it was. I have logged into the Wi-Fi in this warehouse. Okiura Fishery Co. LTD is listed as the owner. I'm genuinely surprised this warehouse has Wi-Fi. Yeah, isn't that weird? However, I found the password written directly on the router. Anyone who saw it could have used it. You know, it just seems like, for whatever reason, whatever it was that happened took place here that they knew a lot about it already. It was like a carefully chosen place, probably because of this mysterious Wi-Fi. That way they could stream it, which was clearly what the goal was. Yeah. I don't know why a bunch of warehouses, especially one that's so dang empty, needs Wi-Fi, but... <laughs> hey, it's my buddy! The inspector is doing his duties, as usual. This time there's actually something he's looking at. What's your name? What's your name? <laughs> Good one, Dante. <laughs> Have I asked you before? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, give me a second. That's coming back to me. 
It has something to do with glass? Mirror. Kagami is mirror. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you getting this from? I don't know. It's like some inner voice inside my head is making me ask these questions. I have a pretty unique name. Well, what's your name then? Do you remember now? Yeah, I think I've got it. It was three syllables. <laughs> something like, I don't know, six letters long. You remember all that, but not my name? <laughs> oh, you're starting to fall into his pace, man. You still don't know. No, not yet, but I've almost got it. Three syllables, six letters. Something to do with glass. Kodaka. <laughs> right? Not even close. <laughs> so what's your name? Do you want me to just tell you? Yes. No, no, g give me a hint. It starts with Ka. Okay. It starts with Ka, three syllables, six letters. <laughs> You're making this sound like a riddle. Could you maybe pantomime it? Charades, maybe? Um... Is it... Kaniza? Kaniza? What? Yeah, sure, man. <laughs> That's my name. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Kanami won this one. <laughs> hey, uh... Kaniza! His name is Kaniza. Probably born between June 22nd and July 22nd. Because he's a cancer, see? Because Connie is crab, and that is the date for cancer. <laughs> Which, you know, is a crab. Crabity crab crab. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> my friend Connie's off. Of course I know who he is. <laughs> Dang it! It didn't update with his name! <laughs> He's right about when he was born, though. Yeah, see, that's how you can tell that it's a game. <laughs> Do you have a family? What? No, unfortunately, I live alone. With a job like this, I don't really get the chance to meet new people. Yeah, you really only get the chance to look at clipboards. Once this case is wrapped up, how about you and I go to a cabaret club together? I know this really great girl who's shaped like an oil drum <laughs> made of makeup. <laughs> hey, now you're talking. You're buying, right? Sure, all expensive. <laughs> I was gonna say, Date as the uh, superior in the organization and the guy that's always giving him a hard time, yeah, he kind of needs to pay. I recorded that conversation. I will be sending it to the boss later. Uh, on second thought, uh, why don't we split it? Aw, lame. <laughs> we see each other a lot, don't we, Kaniza? Oh, you finally noticed? Yeah, wish it were under better circumstances. Too bad you're not a girl. This could be the start of something. <laughs> um... Huh. Yeah, thinking the same thing. <laughs> if I have to meet somebody new who I uh, hit it off with pretty well, why can't it be a girl? Did you find any clues? Of course not! Uh, no, nothing so far. See? But... Blood! So about this giant blood stain you're sitting next to. I mean, surely you figured something out, right? That must be Oda's blood. That's where he was stabbed and went down. Kind of figured there'd be more import to that, but okay. Well, that's straightforward. 3 a.m. this morning, Iris was lying right here. If Ota hadn't come to save her, it would have been too late. Hmm. Oh, ice cutting machine. That makes sense. That, that makes a lot more sense. So did this place used to be a... Huh. That machine is used to cut ice. We have gathered testimony from the workers regarding it. This has always been in the warehouse. Okay. So the suspect did not bring it here. Good to know. Any fingerprints? Nothing. No fingerprints have been found at the scene at all. Really? No fingerprints, huh? I can't help but notice those are fingerless gloves, and he did pull the switch. And he had fingerprints on the steering wheel. Huh. There was something specific going on. I, I get the dude in the bear suit, but Oda pulled that lever. Shouldn't they have found his fingerprints on it? Yeah! I, I, I mean, otherwise, why say no fingerprints at all? This entire warehouse is clean. I see. Or it was cleaned afterwards. Yeah. Like, bear guy goes ahead and cleans everything before he leaves. Right, right. Well, 
<laughs> I like that we kind of zeroed in on the important thing from the get-go. You're really good at just, like, moving over to the thing that allows you to advance. Time for night vision. It's dark over there. Is it of concern? Yeah, but without some light, I can't see. I am perfect for times like this. Night vision, activate! Wonder why you guys missed this. Huh, there's something there. Because they didn't bring flashlights and it's there in the darkness, I guess. You should go pick it up. Huh. I recognize this. An Odoroki Man chocolate. <gasps> what the hell is that thing? <laughs> <laughs> You've been collecting them for three years. Each chocolate contains a special sticker inside. Years ago, you started buying them for Mizuki, but eventually, you got hooked on them. <laughs> Even after Mizuki lost interest, you kept buying them. That's a bittersweet memory. The Odoroki Man chocolate. Why is this here? Perhaps we can use it as a clue. Uh, maybe you got knocked out and then went to the convenience store to buy yourself some Odorokimon chocolate and then came here and watched everything that happened. Then bef before you woke up, you went back to lay back down. Mm -hmm. Seems legit now. He did appear in the car mysteriously. You know something we've never considered? I don't believe this. <laughs> that Iba's the killer. Huh! Yeah, I guess we haven't really considered that. It's utterly preposterous and I don't, you know. Let's investigate further. Also, bless you. Thank you. Um, it also seems like this is a big oversight. I mean, look, you don't you you don't want to get into trying to do 4D chess, okay? But there are no fingerprints at the entire scene. Everything is appears kind of perfectly set up so that Ota becomes the hero. There, there wasn't any blood from Iba's, or from Iris's eye removal. Yeah, nowhere in here is there any blood from the eye removal. Outside are vehicles with Iris and Ota's prints, but there just happens to be, like, a snack wrapper in the corner. Now, it's possible that it's been there for... No, it hasn't been there for a while, or it would have been, like, all frosty. Yeah, yeah. That just seems like an oversight. Like, I'd, I'd find it hard to believe that it's a simple error. We have no choice but to assume it's related to the case, right? Yeah! It, Everything it, else has been related. And I mean, until we can prove that it isn't, what kind of freaking sicko eats, like, a package of candy while involved in all this, you know, stabbing and blood? Maybe an alternate personality of Date's, perhaps? I'm what? not sure how you can hide that from Ima, but... What?! <laughs> Oh, it's freezing. Date, we're at our limit. Don't you think it? you have to be some kind of a sicko to eat junk food at a time like this? Yeah. We've examined everything of interest here. Let's go elsewhere. I agree. I don't really feel like we've gotten that much. Before we reach HQ, Let's summarize our investigation so far. I'm completely in the dark. I mean, I have I have some suspicions, but I don't know what to make of the evidence. <laughs> I'm as lost as you are. I mean, what evidence? But first, the dashboard. These are tasty when they're golden brown. No, that's a hash brown. I believe you're referring to <laughs> hash browns. <laughs> well played, sir. The rear view mirror. Mirror, mirror in the car. Who is the most handsome policeman by far? Why, that is Mr. Date, of course. I don't know, there's apparently an argument about Kagami. <laughs> Date, this is starting to concern me. You really should get some sleep. What sleep? <laughs> the mysterious glove box. Boxing gloves. <laughs> A boxer puts his boxing gloves in the glove box. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> it's good to see that, much like me and the Discord, Dante's puns are rubbing off on everyone around him. Okay, that's pushing it. No, it's not! I am bushed. Likely because you haven't had a good night's sleep. Yeah, 
It's been a while since I've been this busy. Also, last night, there was, like, the great awakening on the head. <laughs> not, not gonna sleep so well. I'm so proud of you, Damon. If my body were made of flesh, I would offer my lap as a pillow. You're sending some mixed signals here, Iba. <laughs> what? You can't say something like that out of the blue. Huh, now it's awkward. Come on, your eye is flirting with you. It was already awkward. <laughs> so, about so. <laughs> I'm so clever. <laughs> There's only circumstantial evidence yeah. linking So Sejima to the new Cyclops serial killings. I agree, but there has to be more to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Kumakuras had connections to both victims. So has a connection to the Kumakuras. There's a common link there. They have to be involved somehow. We also saw So in Iris' Somnium. Whatever meaning we can glean from that. So also might have connections to Iris. Because So appeared in Iris' Somnium? Yeah. Following up on that. I am more interested in the hired guns that So uses as bodyguards. Uh, why? Because they're clones? <laughs> no, they're not clones. Yes, they are clones. They're not clones. They are clones. We're not starting this again. I did some research and discovered that Mr. Sejima hires substantial security. If all of his security staff are this heavily armed, Yakuza gangs pale in comparison. I, I don't know. He didn't have a Gatling gun. Heavily armed? Heavily <laughs> armed? It's a pistol! Not even a zappy pistol like Dante the Volver. Is So trying to start trouble? Unknown, but there is definitely more than he is letting on. And let's talk about Mayumi now. Mayumi is suffering from dementia. If Mayumi followed Ota and Iris, it is highly likely that she saw the person in the polar bear costume. Ah, I see. And so we go into the Somnium to see what, into her Somnium, and it's going to be kind of sad. Oh. Uh, so here's something. If she followed Ota and Iris, what vehicle did she use to do so? Because Ota is the only one whose prints were found in both of these cars. Huh. Or recent prints, anyway. And I really doubt she owns two cars. Like, that she followed in her own vehicle and then left in her own vehicle. Pretty much. I... I <laughs> if, if there were more fingerprints, or recent prints... Yeah, because if she was lurking in the shadows snacking on something, then her prints should have been there. I mean, that was an if she followed them. And maybe there was some sort of hypnotism thing in me, but then she, there would have been traces of her in the car, and there weren't. Right. Ah. I suppose it's possible that a boat was involved, because there was a mooring thing right next to the warehouse. Billy, do you, do you see this? <laughs> yeah. How are you going to sail down the highway? <laughs> but... She might not remember. Correct. I mean, for that matter... Will thinking work? I have no idea. Uh, well, how about Mizuki? Mizuki did not have any new information about Okiura Fishery. Currently, it seems there is nothing linking that company to Renju. Hmm. Still, something's not right. Again, I I'd mentioned before that a possible connection just could be the Okiura name mm -hmm. to, like, kind of help stoke media flames. Right, right. Internet buzz. Do, do we have any other information? There is an important piece of news. What is it? The Odoroki Man chocolate found at the warehouse. Yeah? Fingerprints were found on it. Whose? Mayumi Matsushita's. So it, she really was <laughs> snacking in the corner there. <laughs> okay then. What? Mayumi bought the chocolate at the convenience store 812 on Koshu. Okay. Instead of 7-Eleven. This was captured on security footage. What the heck was she driving? That's the big question here. 812 stores are commonly called 8s. So if she was, maybe she was hypnotized and was in the bear costume? But then that would mean that Iris 
and Ota would know she was there and know that she had left evidence and not cleaned it up? Um, <laughs> after a certain point, uh, the two of them are not exactly... Okay, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, they're not in good shape. That's fair. Eight is not far from the Famisto where Ota stole the station wagon. Hold on a second. I'm having trouble keeping the facts straight. Allow me to summarize. Oh, what time did they leave? I just don't remember. After the walkening, because the car was stolen at 10.55. Wasn't it 10.33? Or 10.33. 10.33, yeah. Ah, I yeah. I about to summarize it. No, I know. I just, <laughs> I agree with Date. This is just weird. Please. Okay, the here we go. The was purchased yesterday at 10.33 p.m. That's the same time Ota stole that car. Correct. What conclusions can we draw from that? That they were there together. Yeah. Unknown. But why were there no traces of Mayumi in either vehicle? Okay, if Mayumi was driving a vehicle and stopped at 8.12 to get a snack, and Ota ran over to Famisto to steal a car and get away from her... There's only one problem with that. That, that still doesn't make sense. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I was just trying to think... Like, because you forgot that witch, get away from my boy, and that's when everybody left. Right! So then why are they taking a leisurely drive? Ah. All that is known for certain is that Mayumi bought the right. chocolate at an eight store last night. And that same chocolate somehow ended up in the warehouse. Did she go there and drop it? It is possible. Well... Did she eat it in the car? And then they took it in there intentionally? That seems weird, too. Everything seems weird. Nothing makes any sense. Like, there's a critical piece of information that we're missing that would let us tie this stuff together. Yeah, and I'm really intrigued. I like that. Sorry to interrupt your brainstorming, but there's a call from the boss. It's okay, Iba. Connect me. Date. Did you hear that Iris's operation is over? And? Yeah, I heard about it at the hospital. She made it, right? Yes, but she's still unconscious. She's currently in the ICU. No visitors allowed. All right. Ota, however, seems like he can talk now. Well, 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 well. Now, um, I don't know what sort of thing he's <laughs> going to do to try and say, I'm not talking. Except invoke his right to not incriminate himself, I guess. Are you kidding? He's probably going to spell out this amazing story where he's the hero. Well, that's the only thing he can do, because, again, he's going to get arrested, man. He, uh -huh. he can't not talk to the police. <laughs> he's out of treatment? Yeah, he's in a general ward now. Even if he's a hero, dude's going to get arrested. He assaulted a police officer. He assaulted a police officer and stole a car. And yes, he committed two crimes! Got it. I'll head over. I'll meet you there. How are you feeling, Ota? You know, surprisingly, I'm feeling pretty good. I bet you I'm are. I'm still under anesthesia, so I don't have any pain. Alright, that's good. Ota, I'm sorry to put this on you right after your surgery, but can you talk to us for a minute? As long as you're not too loopy on the anesthesia. We're being nice right now. <laughs> we don't have to keep being nice. <laughs> so you better not say no. Boss got right to business after introducing herself. The fact that she is an attractive woman only helped. I don't know why, but uh -huh. Ota seemed almost... Happy to answer. It's the only thing that makes sense. It's like he stole the car to make sure that he committed a crime. For some reason, this is relevant. I mean, he already had a vehicle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He didn't need another vehicle. Right. Unless there was a reason he needed it, and the reason could actually have been to commit a crime, but he already committed a crime by assaulting an officer. Does he need to go to prison and wipe out number 89? <laughs> He's a sleeper agent. He's going to get him with the frying pan. Like, after doing that, he then gets to become a hero. 
why was it necessary for him to do those crimes? Why didn't he just become a hero? Just becoming a hero can't be the goal, or he wouldn't have needed to do it right. under these circumstances. Right. And there's still that thing? Maybe it was the drugs. Maybe it was the high from surviving a life or death situation. I mean, it's also possible that there isn't some Ota becomes a hero thing that was being planned, but I don't know. I don't need to say anything else. Or maybe it was because he saved Iris. Yeah, sure. Woo! <laughs> ah! A bedside table. Is it a bedside table when you move it away from the bed? I suppose then it's just a table. This doesn't matter! An LCD TV. Hey, Date, when are you planning on leaving? Oh, come off it, kid. The good stuff is gonna come on soon. Mm. You're not watching that tonight. A bed. Hey, Date, I don't think I can sleep by myself tonight. What do you want me to do about it? Will you sleep with me? Okay, you're still loopy. <laughs> Why me? Oh, then that old woman over there is fine. <laughs> oh my god, prepare to die! <laughs> old woman? Ota is about to die. So, why did you come here? I'm kind of interested in Ota. Yes, yeah, she has things she wants to ask. And me? You protected the woman you love. That's not easy to do. <laughs> I wanted to meet the brave little hero. Uh-huh, yeah, she, she's kind of building him up. Hero? Little? I'm 24. You're four feet tall. <laughs> you're shorter than me, sir, kid. To me, you're still little. <laughs> oh, oh, God, we need to protect Ota from Boss. Why? Anything you want to ask, Ota? I'll leave this to you, Date. Did you find any new clues? If I did, I would have told you already. <laughs> well, don't give me the option to ask you so many questions if you don't want me to ask them. Me, me, me. Ota's laying down in bed, understandably. No, he was lying down in bed, not laying. Damon's about to be knocked smooth the F out. So about the walk. Oh, yeah. You hit me over the head with that walk, didn't you? Oh, uh, that was... No, I didn't. <laughs> yes, you did. I thought I needed to protect Tessa, so... Uh-huh. Isn't there something you want to say to me? Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, uh-uh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't buy this for a second. I might believe that, except the look on your face right afterwards. It's okay. But you're not going to get a second chance. <laughs> I won't do it again. Date is being very merciful here. I swear on Ganesha. Okay, okay, okay. So, <laughs> you know, Ganesha is a, a, a Hindu god. The big elephant god. I might be willing to be like, <laughs> oh, it's just a thing that happens in this game. Mm -hmm. If it weren't for all the Egyptian stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, whatever, kid. You should swear to a god that's a little closer, kid. Did you hear about Iris? Her surgery was successful, right? Yeah, thanks to you. Hmm. If you weren't there, Iris would have been in real trouble. <laughs> yeah, it seems like everyone's kind of fallen for it, in a way. Maybe. I'm Tessa's biggest fan. I don't think Boss really has. I think she's probably pretty con or pretty suspicious. I could be wrong. It's not like we know her that well, but, you know, considering how last time she did have questions to ask Mizuki, and this time she's like, I wanted to see the big hero, and then just sits back and observes, it just gotcha. seems like she's got her suspicions. Any fan would have done what I did. It's nothing special. It's as normal as... Garlic and ramen. Which is not normal. <laughs> Though it would be fine. I think that depends on preference. Honestly, I'm a little bit scared of my new power. Uh-huh, yeah, kid. When I locked eyes with that polar bear, I saw him start shaking. He saw how strong I was and got scared, no doubt. Ota's body temperature is rising. Oh, Ota, you can't lie for nothing. He's embellishing his story quite a bit. 
I think we can let that go today. Fair point. Yeah, that is a fair point. Because if he is legit, then that makes sense. Yeah, you're right. So who stabbed you? Were you watching the stream? You were stabbed off stream, kid. A big polar bear. Yes, I'm talking about who was inside. Did you see them? No. Whoever it was was probably wearing that costume to hide their identity. I would question how a guy in a polar bear costume could really hold a knife. Like, throwing a lever, okay, yeah, sure, fine, but... Also, it couldn't have been Mayumi in that thing, now that I think about it. Because it was way too big? Yeah. So, about that thing on your Nile message! You're, you're gonna get us to run around again, though, aren't you? That's... <sighs> Sorry. I promised that I wouldn't tell anyone. Part of me wants to just go back to that scene and then put it in Japanese... Is, was it like Sono Mono or Sono Koto? Oh, what do you mean? Was it a thing or a matter? Like an object mm. or something to be discussed? Hmm, okay. Then I'll tell Iris about your fake accounts. That's a distinction that, uh, that does eliminate some possibilities in Japanese, you know? Okay. You know what happens after that, right? Everything you built up here is going to come crashing down. Nah. <sighs> I don't got a problem kicking you while you're down. But I can't tell you. Why not? Calm down and think about it. The criminal who attacked Iris is still out there. Iris might have seen the criminal's face. Whoever did this might come back to kill her. No. If you want to protect her, the fastest way is for us to catch this guy. But to do that, I need information. Okay. Hmm. I had just briefly considered the idea that maybe he actually doesn't have anything to do with this, but then the smile on his face. Right! That's like the big smoking gun, or smoking walk, as the case may be. Well, not only that, it's not hidden. The game made a point of showing that to us. And this game is very particular about what it shows us. Well, whether it, whether it's this game or any other game or not, it is not intended to be a secret from the viewer because he had that awful smile. Yeah. So it wanted us to be suspicious for good reason. What happened after you left Matsushita Diner? You mean after hitting you with the walk? Yeah. Yes. I took Tessa in the van and we ran away. I drove for a while, then we decided to take a breather. I parked the car at Femisto on Koshu. I told Tessa I was gonna go in and buy something to drink. I got out of the car, and I went inside. And then a man in a polar bear costume climbed into the van and drove off. But then, I heard Tessa screaming. Ota, help! I ran out of the store as fast as I could, but the car was driving away! I looked around. And I saw there was a car with its engine still on, and... The station wagon, right? Yeah. Before I even realized what I was doing, I was behind the steering wheel. I just am not so sure I can buy this. That sounds way too convenient. I didn't mean to steal it. I just needed to borrow it. It does appear that him stealing it is part of the story. Right. The time was 10.33 p.m. Now we know why Ota stole the station wagon. And after stealing the station wagon? I took the car, then drove out onto Koshu, but I couldn't find the van anywhere. I searched for what felt like hours. You didn't contact the police? I thought after I hit you. You shouldn't have worried about that. But that's huh. all that I was thinking at the time. That is remarkably generous, isn't it? What well, do you mean? That, that Date's just so willing to overlook that. Date's a decent person. Even when he suspected Iris, he was still pretty not accusatory and not, like, aggressive or hostile to her. <sighs> Other than the chocolate, everything just lines up too well. Like, so the Cyclops killer wandering around in a polar bear costume, <laughs> or some other costume, but carrying a polar bear costume, 
or or no costume but carrying a polar bear costume but very fastidious in terms of leaving traces of his uh, presence in the van because he didn't <laughs> just happens to be waiting around for a random victim. Right. Be I'm sure that it's just a complete coincidence that both Shoko and Menju were targeted. They, they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time because that's how he operates, right? <laughs> Ready to stream it? <laughs> I just cannot take this at face value. I thought that if I called the cops, they'd arrest me. I wasn't thinking clearly. I was panicking. Now, it is true. If he's legit, he probably wouldn't be charged with the car or cert or the assault if they don't want to press it. So he could get off completely scot-free. And if he's legit, then he'd deserve it. But I don't think he's legit. That's a good if. Yeah, if. And that's why I didn't realize it right away. Realize what? My phone. I left my new phone in the car. Right. Why is that so important? Because the phone had GPS on it. If I looked it up, I would find the location of the van. Smart. Uh-huh. So I drove as fast as I could to an internet cafe and looked it up. That's when I found out my new phone was at a warehouse near the water. You know the rest. And after running into the warehouse? Did you see me turn off the saw? Yeah, but everything after that was off screen. Yeah, see, what see, happened? see, look at his hand. His left hand. Oh yeah, he's wearing the glo fingerless gloves. Yeah, he's wearing the fingerless gloves. I honestly don't remember much. Oh yeah. My mind went blank. And what a perfectly reasonable time for your mind to go blank and to not really remember something like that. It's it's just too hard to continue it or to really push that point on him, you know, because that makes sense. It could happen. I remember rushing the bear. And I think I was fighting him for a while. With the kung fu moves <laughs> that I learned from reading manga. And we got tangled up. And then before I knew it, he got me in the stomach with a knife. Implying you would last more than two seconds. And you don't know the identity of the polar bear. Just to make absolutely certain, you didn't see who was in the suit? No, I didn't. Voice? Body type? Nothing. Sorry. We can fought in silence as men do. <laughs> <laughs> Anything at all you can remember? I'm uh, sorry, I haven't fabricated that part yet. I, what was I, that? I certainly understand that I wouldn't be chattering while in a fight, but maybe like, Ugh, or something. Yeah. And surely that would have been picked up by the cameras, you know? Like the sounds of combat? I'm sorry, I told you everything. I don't know. I don't know if there was sound or not. I, I think there was, but I don't remember for sure. I can't think of anything else. Are you sure? Yes. Date, look. Oh, come on. <laughs> Are you really surprised? After all this, what is he trying to hide? So about the Odoroki men chocolate. Mr. Surprise! I took the chocolate out of my pocket and showed it to Oda. I mean, Surprise Man is what it means. Oh! Does this jog your memory? I'd say a robot zombie bear is pretty surprising, yeah. <laughs> oh, that. That? Actually, you know, it's kind of disturbing. Some of those Pokemon... Some of those... Pokemon? ...look like Pokemon. The slime thing looks like a Scrafty. The crow kind of looks like a Murkrow. I'm, I'm just saying. What? Do you know something about it? No? <laughs> this was what was you unaccounted don't have to show for. Me the thermograph. <laughs> it's written all over his face. Absolutely. And back to that thing. Remember when I told you about my day Saturday? I kind of lied a little. So it wasn't a totally normal day where you went to check out the new releases and uh, had ramen at Judo's? What did you lie about? When I got to Sunfish Pocket, I saw a sign that said the place was all rented out. That part is true. But after that, I said I went home, but I didn't. I was hanging out in Akihabara for a few hours. Is that when you bought your new phone? Yeah. Why did you hide that? Because something happened after. Uh-huh. 
something happened after? This must have been about 8.50. I was going to cross the intersection in Akiba, and I saw Mr. Okiura's car at the light. But when I got close, I saw Tessa driving it. That's weird. Iris was driving it? Whoa! You surprised me! I'm more surprised than you are! <laughs> I didn't think anyone would see me transporting my murder victim! <laughs> Is something wrong? At 8.50, and he didn't see Okiura, so this... Oh, I just can't remember the time! I know, it's... the time of death was 8, I know that. It's not like... An ace attorney where we have like an evidence folder or something where we can look at all the data points. Right, and remind ourselves of the time, but isn't this her transporting Mr. Okiura? Yup. What do you mean? Hey, Tessa, do you have a license? I, I see, so... <laughs> don't tell them you saw me driving... I see! Okiura's car. Oh, yeah, of course I do not have one you don't have a license Shh. mr okiura asked me to run an errand i had to borrow his car uh-huh <laughs> please don't tell anyone okay you promise anything for you man no i just was about to think what if otis After being that, legit the light turned green and she drove off what if he's telling mostly the truth but that grin, man! Yeah, it's just hard to discount that smile, that smirk. Was Iris the only one in the car? Yeah, it was just her. And that weird way that they were interacting with Mayumi. That's what I meant by that thing. Well, it's also possible that if Iris did something to Mayumi, she could have done Oda too. Whatever that something is. Huh. I wonder if rather than some kind of conspiracy, it could, it's possible that it could be several unrelated incidents. Those I, are some pretty big coincidences. That also makes it weird for fiction. Hmm. And idle driving without a license is a huge deal. So I kept quiet. Uh-huh. That's real believable. Well, actually, it is extremely believable. That's kind of the problem. I, I guess what I'm getting at is, like, did he just throw Iris under the bus? Or, like, are they working together or not? That's what I, that's what I mean when I, when I was talking about unrelated incidents. Ah. Uh, yeah, I know I'm kind of doubting too, but go on. Saturday at 6.15 p.m., Ota saw Iris and Renju together. They were leaving the Sunfish Pocket Building. Two and a half hours later, Ota witnessed Iris driving Renju's car. What are your thoughts? You know, this is sounding really bad for Iris. We've kind of already discussed this. But consider the current circumstances. Iris had her left eye taken out by a criminal who is possibly the new Cyclops killer. And if Ota had not reached her in time, she would have been killed. What is going on here? Okay, but I'm afraid that that. That's not going to absolve her of the crime of killing Renju? Date, Ota is acting strange. Well, he's on painkillers. I advise caution. What do you mean? Oh. Huh. I don't believe it. Are you serious? He's holding a knife. Uh-huh. Okay. Why does he have that? Yeah! Just in freaking case. He's clearly holding a lot back or just telling his story. So he is totally ready to defend himself again or something. Oh my god. In any case, you know what you have to do now. I know. You've been super nice to him. Nice. The gloves are off! Nicer than I would have been. Let me go! 
Let me go! What the hell do you think you're doing? Shut up! Just let me go! There we go. Sleeping gas. Now you've done it. I can't question him like this. But... <laughs> but you can still get information inside his head. We're going to carry him out of the hospital now, and we're going to interrogate him when he can't sign a waiver approving it. Yeah, well, they've already done something maybe a little iffy. They have every reason to be able to do this. What? Why did Boss have that sleeping gas? In case there was something like this, because she was already suspicious of him. Okay. I just don't find it weird. Dante, as you know, the limit is six minutes. Please do not go over it. Won't be a problem. I make no promises. Are you sure this is okay? Ota just came out of surgery. If anything happens, I'll take responsibility. But... It's fine. Just get it done. Continue to suspect, boss, if you want, Good though. Enough for me. She just seems a little eager to get him synced with Ota, I feel. I don't agree with that at all. Hmm. Well, I can't quite put my finger on it, so... I like these transitions. Yeah. So what are we going to find here? Is it going to be a magical anime world? Can you please take me with you? <laughs> oh, she's a poor little kitty in a box. Kitty! As long as I have Wi-Fi, I don't need anything else. Internet kitty! <laughs> Sorry, we can't have pets. Hm. Cold-hearted old man. I agree. Huh. Is this a cold storage warehouse? This music. What? <laughs> it's like a it's like a Sentai theme. More like a Tokusatsu theme, not a Sentai theme, but it's you know kind of uh, 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 late seventies, um, early eighties. Seems to be. Not a manga cafe. Or an otaku shop? Well, I mean, this kind of makes sense considering what he's recently been yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. No, but a warehouse is a commonly used location in live-action dramas. You know a lot. Predicting this, I did some research on Ota's taste. Plus, she can access the internet, so I mean... I see. By the way, are you smaller? Either that, or everything else is bigger. Interesting. Oh god, how much time is it going to eat up running across the warehouse? Hey, that's... Almaver! Iris is about to be... Stop right there! Uh -huh. <laughs> and he's gonna come in as common Rider. The earth cries out! The crowds roar! All calling on me to strike back against evil! Make sure to pose some more, too, because it's really cool. Okay, look, we, we casually mention it. I I actually really like Tokusatsu shows. I, I enjoy every one that you've showed me. Now, when they're not good, I don't like them, but there's a lot of very good ones. Hold on, Tessa! I will save you! Yeah! <laughs> yep, yep. Because you have to unnecessarily somersault around. Uh, is this from the stream we saw earlier? This is the way he remembers it. <laughs> this is Ota's memory of it. It appears to be a bit exaggerated. <laughs> All right, let's help reproduce the memory. Somnium scan, activate. <sighs> Could it really be legitimate? Well, whether it's legitimate or not, this is who Ota is. <laughs> Maybe deeper is something. And he's at the end. Ota's at the end. Sinking in the swain? Reproduce the fiery battle between Ota and the polar bear! 
アイリスを救う社会を救え行け俺たちのヒーローオータマン<笑>Wasn't gonna say anything about the chocolate, and then it was just dropped. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, we have Mayumi on camera buying it. Yeah, so I don't know what that was exactly, but the knowledge you gained might be useful. This is great. <laughs> I did not want to use my local storage space for this. <laughs> you just don't have any romance in your heart, Iba. Onward to the first collectible! Ha <laughs> ha! Ice does not affect micro Iba! Onward to the first co okay. I can't get to the first collectible. Okay, so well can... then quit messing around and get to it. Don't forget, we almost ran out of time last time. The ice on the floor is slick. This is a lot of seconds. This is a Okay. Oh my god! Alright, you wanna you wanna play around and do something? That's fine. And then we're reloading. Iba! Use brick break! This is for Dante! This is for Dante! This is for Dante! It's not very effective. Oh, wow! Kidding? Ice is weak to fighting type moves! What did the ice do to me? Look, for a one second timey, <laughs> that seems like how you solve a puzzle. Oh, good. Cowabunga! Did my body temperature melt the ice? Cowabunga! Did you just make a Ninja Turtles reference? I'm a Radical! What are you? Those who don't fight won't survive! Ah! Oh, I want to use Tackle. It was super effective. Flipping off, all right. <laughs> then do do like a pose, and then pull out like your special gun and shoot the gun. <laughs> no, not like that. Tessa, may the glory of victory be yours. <laughs> It's over. I suppose we have no choice but to find the glory of victory. Oh God. Uh... I I can't help but point out that that's kind of a. Gundam quote. It is. Yeah. <laughs> An oil drum, though it is lying down. It wasn't on the shelf in the actual warehouse. It was lying on the ground. <laughs> oh my God! Jesus! Yeah, I just realized how much time this took. Huh? Let's think about this. I mean, roll seems like the obvious answer. It hurts, but we're gonna have to do it. <laughs> I love her power, her strength. <laughs> that is, however, what this Somnium is about: Ota's powerful strength. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. And you know, Iba can always do stuff like this. <laughs> Acetone, aset. Oh. Interesting. Never thought of that. That's true. Huh. What is this? The 
power of Aset's glory! We'll get to that floral pattern in just a little bit, I imagine. I eventually stopped thinking. <gasps> That's Tessa! Now that I have seen her light, I know I must fight on! <laughs> <laughs> Stand your ground! Odamatsu Shida cowers to no one! <laughs> Maybe we should have looked at what was on this shelf. Show the letter A on the drum. <laughs> I have to fight back with something! Counterattack ignited! Turn on the electricity! With the remote control? I mean, that's what it looked like, right? That's probably the control of the crane. So Polar Bear Son was holding Mayumi's floral pattern knife. Uh-huh. So does this mean that Mayumi's in the suit? Or that Ota is viewing this as like standing up against everything repressive in his life? Yes. No, I'm not sure. It could be a real detail that he saw, or it could be... A subconscious thing, because this is a somnium. It could even be both. Like, isn't getting a detail like that the whole point of coming into a somnium? Yeah. Well, in any case, looks like this is going to require some heavy-duty braining. And if there's one thing you can say about BSG, it's we expended our brains about an hour ago, so... <laughs> we'll pick up next time with more of the heroic adventures of Common Rider Ota. No, we won't. Yeah, we will. No, we won't. Of course we will. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No.